Hey everyone, I'm Jill with GoEnglishCoach.com. Today we're going to talk about the phonetic alphabet. And it's really helpful to learn these symbols because it can help you to learn how to pronounce something correctly. Um, let's take a look at our consonant sounds in English. So we have 24 different consonant sounds in English. Let's All right, let's take a look, you guys. P puppy. B as in buy. Take, d, as in dad. Now, if you guys notice right here, I'm using these lines, those angled or slanted lines. That represents the sound, okay? Just the sound, the pronunciation of that sound. So these are actually like symbols, not just letters. And you'll see some of them over here a little bit more when we're talking about different sounds that are represented differently. Um, k, this one comes from back here, k, king. G, go. These two actually come from the same place, kind of in the back of your mouth at the top of your throat. K, king and go. Many of these so far are usually not problems for people. Some students um, will confuse these two sounds. And the confusion usually comes because that sound doesn't exist in your first language. Um, let's see. F family. W win. Some students have a problem with w. Now we're into the, the second row here. We've got the video. So your teeth are on your lips. Video. Some students have a problem with that one. This is a symbol that's different from all of these because it's not a letter in English. It's not part of our alphabet. This is the th sound here. We have two th sounds in English. One and two. This one is voiceless, as in think. So only air is coming out and there's no vibration. Think. This one's a little bit different. Same point of articulation. Your tongue goes through your teeth. This. Think is the first one. And this one is this. So the difference here is you can feel the voices, you can feel the vibration. This. Think. No vibration on think, but there is vibration for this. Okay, so that's the difference there with those two sounds. Say. Zebra. Again, these are coming from the same place in your mouth. S say and zebra. This one has vibration, zebra. This one does not. This sound, this symbol makes the sh, the sh sound in English. Sh, should, shoe. Okay, and we, we make that, we represent that sim, the symbol for this is this kind of long s looking thing, should. Similar to this one is the zh sound, j, as in usual, right here, this j, usual. And we have the y sound, y, you, yes. Some students really need to practice that one because in their language, maybe it sounds a little bit more like our English is j, like j. So sometimes my students need to practice that one a lot. All right, in this final column here, we've got a couple more. This is the ch, ch sound. So it's similar to this one where it's sh. This one is a little harder. Ch. It's a little harder sound. So it's got a little bit of a T sound in the beginning and then that. So we say ch, change, choose. Okay? We've got the M sound, m, mom, N, n no, nice. This sound here is in the final position of this word, sing, and it comes from back here in your throat, ing, ing, ring, sing. We don't usually have it, I can't think of any word actually that has that in an initial position, usually at the end. And then in our present progressive tense, when we use the ing form, like I am walking, I am listening, I am learning, the, that sound is always at the end there. 
The L sound, l, l, lemon, like. The R sound, R, R. English's R is a little bit different than some other languages, than a lot of other languages. We have a very round, open sound. So your mouth really makes this a circle, ride, ready, ring, okay? And then the last one I have here is the happy. It's a, air is coming out, happy, happy, hi, hello, how are you, right? So, these, so a good thing to do with these sounds would be to um, practice them, try to listen for other words in English that have these sounds, and then also make a note of any of the sounds that are a little bit different from your language. And then you know that those are the ones you really need to practice. So for example, if the R in your first language is a little bit different, then you just know you have to practice that sound or be more intentional or mindful about that sound when you're pronouncing it. Let's also take a look at the vowels. So check out my next video about vowels. Now vowels can be really tricky in English. And we've got a lot of sounds, a lot of vowel sounds in English, but only five to six letters that represent those sounds. So those sounds actually create kind of a lot of problems for people in English. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Check out our website at GoEnglishCoach.com. It'll be down below in the, in the comments. And please feel free to always ask questions, comment on our videos, and I can always try to make another video to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Have a great day.